Lord, we love you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
symptom, every, every respiratory issue, every uh, ache, every pain, every sinus blockage, every cough, every headache, diarrhea, Lord, I come against anxiety, I come against depression, I come against fear, right now. And I command it to leave. Yes. I speak to every sickness and I say, be healed, yeah. be whole, every respiratory system, function properly in Jesus' name. And Father God, I just thank you for surrounding every man like a shield. The word says that you surround us with your grace like a shield. So wherever that chink is in our armor, Father God, I just pray that you would reveal it to us so that the walls can be built even stronger. And Father God, I declare right now that 2022 will be a year free of sickness and disease and oppression in Woo! Jesus' name, in this house. Yeah. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Let the children of God say, Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> The Father is, in this season, is calling us going out of last year and into this year, the word of the Lord was, He wants us to believe, He wants our belief to expand, amen, amen. capacity to believe. Jesus said that all things are possible to those who believe. Amen. I get excited when I hear that. Come on. All things are possible. To 
those that believe. Are we are we a believer? Yep. You We're believers, it. right? Yes, sir. You know it. Come on. Let's say that. I'm a believer. I'm, I'm a believer. believer. Therefore, 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 all things are possible. All, all things, things are possible. possible. Amen. Amen. Lord, reveal anything to us that any unbelief to us going into this new year and reveal it to us so we can move it out of the way. Because that tells me if all things aren't happening and I'm praying for certain things, it's on me. It ain't on God. It's never on God. Amen? All right. So dream, believe big, dream big, and speak faith. Jesus only said what, God, what he heard God say, what he heard the Father say. Amen? Amen. And because of that, none of his words fell to the ground. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Amen. If everything we said <laughs> got the results that God desired. Woo! All things are possible to those who believe. Amen? You know how we get it on the earth? We speak it. Amen. That's all prayer is. It's a declaration. <laughs> saying what God said. <coughs> now, I'm not talking about genie in the bottle type stuff. In the Lambo. I'm talking about bringing the kingdom. Bringing right. the kingdom. Right. Now, some people say that God will give you what you need, but he won't give you what you want. <laughs> uh, what? That's a lie, too. <laughs> lie that would work. Psalm 23 says what? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not what? Want. Huh? I shall not want. All right. He's going to meet our needs, and, and there's going to be some other stuff that's going to come in too. But that's not why we do it. Amen? That's just, that's just the benefits of walking with the king in the kingdom. Come on. For the purpose of what? His glory. His name. Come on, man. God's wanting to expand our capacity to believe Amen. in this season. All things are possible to those who believe. We're talk we've been talking about, when we closed out, uh, the last time we talked, we talked about tearing down strongholds. Let's go back there real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to camp out here today, so I don't. There's no need to break out the books, because I think this is this is every day, gentlemen. This is every day, all day. Come on. This is spiritual warfare. This takes place every day, all day. Yeah. You know how many thoughts we have mm. per minute? A lot. <laughs> we have a lot of thoughts. Now let me say this. Every thought that comes is not a God thought. That's right. There's two kinds of thoughts. It's either God's, it's either from above. James says there's two kinds of wisdom. It's either coming from above or beneath. Right. What the enemy likes to try to do is he likes to try to bring up things from our past. Yeah. And he likes to try to convince us that that's who we are. And it might even be ways that we used to think. It might be lustful thoughts. You know, that's one of the things that a lot of men have been shown that they, they deal with is lustful thoughts. But we've got to cast down those thoughts. Amen? And not identify with those thoughts. We have to identify with who we are in Christ. Go ahead, Joe. You know, you're talking about <clears throat> the thoughts and what come to my mind just then was, you know, it could be even presently true of that, like the thoughts, <coughs> you know, but they're against what Christ says about you. You know, if you don't grab a hold of what the Lord says, you'll never manifest that next level. It could be currently true what you're hearing about yourself, but if you don't look to the Word and say, no, this is... This is who I am and who I'm gonna be in here and step into that fullness of it. And you'll say stuff. Yeah, there's you know, understanding the, the way that the makeup of man is is definitely one hundred percent important when we're talking about this. Because we are a spirit. We are a spirit. 
Amen. The Bible says that those who worship God must worship Him in what? In the Spirit. Spirit and truth. God is the Spirit. We're going to jump. We're going to hit that in just a second. I want to do this real quick. God is Spirit. Amen. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. So, if I'm created in God's image and God is spirit, then what am I? Spirit. Spirit. What does the Bible say when we, to be absent from the body is to be what? Y'all familiar with that verse? <coughs> to be absent from the body is to be what? So when I go to a funeral and I see that cast, that body in the casket, is that that person? That's just an earth suit. As soon as that body goes in the ground, guess what? It's going to be dust. That's right. But guess what? The Spirit, it's where the Spirit is. With Jesus. Come on. Amen? Come on. To be absent, the moment that we leave this body, guess what? We're in heaven. Amen. We're dancing with Jesus. Amen. That's why the Bible, that's why Paul told believers, he says, don't sorrow as those that have no hope. Because people that aren't born again and aren't saved, guess what? Their spirit ain't with Jesus. That's, right. that's why we got to tell people about Jesus. Because their, their spirit is going to be forever tormented. The moment that we die, our spirit to be absent from the body... We need to be rejoicing about that. Yeah. That's why Jesus was able to deal with the fear of death. <clears throat> because if I know that if I leave this earth, if I'm with Jesus, Paul said it like this, <clears throat> to live is Christ and to die is gain. gain. Come on. Paul. We need to get this. <clears throat> because listen, the fear of death is the mother of all fears. The fear of death is the mother of all fears. And in Christ, we should have zero fear of death. Come on. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Fine. That means it don't matter where Jesus sends me. I don't care. I don't care if I watch the news and this neighborhood just got shot up and Jesus is sending me there. And this has happened before in Columbus, the housing area. There was a shooting, and we had an outreach plan there the next day. Now, if if I'm sleeping the night before and the Lord wakes me up and says, "Don't go in there," guess what? I ain't going in there. But if I have peace, and it's something that we already planned, and I feel like the Lord's still saying, "I need you to go in," there is going to be zero fear. Amen. <clears throat> Zero fear. Walk through the fire, won't get burned. We, the, we, one of the last outreaches we did, we were over there grilling, and the guy said, "Man, just a couple days ago, there was a couple youngsters over there, and they had all their guns out, just a few feet away from where we were talking, just waving guns in the air." And I was like, "So, you know, because the, what the enemy will try to do is the enemy will try to stir up fear." To keep you from your assignment. That's right. The enemy will try to stir up fear. And, and <coughs> that's going on right now in the earth. <coughs> and the Lord's been showing me that in the last couple of days. Is there's a shaking mm. that takes place that's from God. Mm. And the shaking that takes place from God is His Word <coughs> causing things that don't line up with the word mm. to remove. Amen? Right. Mindsets. We're doing it right now. People have fear. And we shouldn't. Why? Because the Bible says that God's perfect love casteth out every fear. It says that Jesus has dealt with the fear of death. Why doesn't God want us to have fear? Because fear has torment. Yeah. Bondage. Fear is the nature of the enemy. It's his nature. He's the father of lies. 
And it don't have to be anything major either. I mean, yeah. it could be something like, for instance, I was speaking with my dad this past week, and um, and the spirit inside of me wanted to start, you know, witnessing a lot more than I was, but some type of spirit was trying to hold me back. Yeah. Just in that, me and him in that small little setting. That's good. Um, and just learning baby steps, overcoming that little fear. Very good. Into yeah. Stepping out. You know, stepping out. Um, that's one of the things we're going to talk about today, and we'll get into it in a minute, is, is walking like Jesus. You know, we're called to walk like Jesus. <laughs> and, and I'm saying we because I don't always, I find myself sometimes getting in a hurry. I'll see somebody that needs prayer. You know, some things are just obvious. You see people with a cast, or you see somebody with a cane, or crutches, and that's just obvious. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're in such a hurry, we just whoosh, always see somebody walking down the street. You can tell they're in addiction. Yeah. You can tell they're tormented. They walk by, you can see it on them. Yeah. And the Lord is wanting us just to take a couple of minutes and talk to them and see where they're at. You know what I mean? And it might even be a brother on a work crew. Mm -hmm. You know, just stop for a second, see if they're all right. Check on them. If you see some odd behavior or, you know, that maybe they're acting a little bit different. Maybe they're down. You know? We got we to gotta break out of fear. Because, listen, listen to this. Fear is a spiritual law. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Fear is a spiritual law. The spiritual law of fear... Job said in uh, Job chapter 3, verse 25, he says, The thing that I have greatly feared has come upon me. You know what he was doing? He was up every day offering sacrifices for his kids, and he was afraid something was going to happen to him. The next thing you know, he's losing everything. <clears throat> Too many believers are highly developed in fear. We need to be highly developed in what? Faith. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. I'll give you another good example of that when <clears throat> Jesus informed the disciples about following him. He makes the statement about counting the cost. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, weighing out, look, yeah. saying yes to this. Is gonna, it's going to cost you something, right? And then, of course, that's not to, to incite fear by any means, but you see further back in the Old Testament, you've got David. Rather than counting the cost, he starts taking stock. And that's when plague comes upon his house, right? It's when he's counting his chariots and counting his horses and counting his men and counting the swords and taking stock of everything and building, building, building for the sake of saying either, ooh, I've accumulated this or ooh, I don't want to lose this. And the preparation for not losing things from a place of fear or self-serving security or whatever you want to call it will quicker position you to lose those things like you're saying with Job. Mm -hmm. Right, he was doing. I don't think sacrificing on behalf of other people is bad as a form of intercession, but not for the sake of not believing the Lord's going to take care of it without your sacrifice. God's got that in His hand, with you know, regardless of your work, unless He's given you a particular instruction, you know, to do something of that nature. But there's a very big difference between counting the cost and figuring out what you're going to give up for the sake of what the Lord's called you to do, and taking stock. Or keeping the things that he might not necessarily have called you to keep for the sake of saying, oh, this is what the Lord's doing, or oh, this is what I don't want to happen. You've yeah. got to discern the difference. That That's what the Spirit does for us. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Let our worship be from a place of thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, of what he's already done. Mm. Everything in the kingdom is past tense, including yeah. our healing. Yeah. By his stripes we are healed. We're healed. We're healed, yeah. Past tense. Everything's past tense. We have our he has already given us every spiritual blessing in Christ. Yeah. You know, inside of us we have the incorruptible seed. We're talking about the spiritual makeup of man. When we were born again, we weren't born of our daddy, our natural daddy seed. We were born of what? Incorruptible seed, which is what? The Word of God. Think about that. That's become our identity. 
That's why the enemy doesn't want us to understand who we are because he's afraid of Jesus. Jesus went down and pillaged hell, took the keys. Amen. You know why the Bible calls us more than a conqueror? Because when Jesus defeated the enemy, he did it as a man. He did it before, even before he went down to hell and defeated death, hell, and the grave and then resurrected. We have both of those victories. We have the complete victory of Jesus living on the inside of us. And greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. That's why God tells us, he says, everywhere the sole of your feet touches belongs to you because of what we carry. <coughs> Amen? Amen. God's wanting to tear down some of these old mindsets. Listen, when, when, when God called the spies to go in to spy the land, He sent out 12 spies. Only two of them came back with a good report. You know what the other 10 said? Grasshoppers. Come on. Too little. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Great. Say it again. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. How do we see ourselves? Because the way that we just, the way that we see ourselves determines the way that the enemy sees us. God had already told them, "This land belongs to you. You just gotta go get it. Possess the land." <laughs> The giant, so what? No. Our God is bigger. Amen? Isn't that right, Matt? Our God is bigger than them giants. I said this the other day. Ask David about that giant. He wasn't studying that giant. He knew his God was bigger. Under the old covenant. The whole church, the whole nation of Israel, the armies of Israel were just sitting there afraid to go out against this giant. Here comes this little shepherd boy. He's slinging at five rocks and he's like, give him to me. So I was like, take this armor. He's like, nah. Nah, 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 I got this. Me and God got this. He said, you uncircumcised Philistine. Zero fear. Zero fear. I love that. Our God is bigger. Amen? Whatever situation that you're going through, God is bigger. God is bigger. And He's already won the battle. He's already won the victory. We don't fight for the victory. We fight from the victory. Now there is going to be a fight. I'm telling you, when you start when you start going in to possess new places, there's going to be some resistance. There's going to be some resistance. But the Bible says that He always causes us to triumph. That's good news, amen? He always causes us to triumph. I love that. So, the shaking is, God, there's a shaking, and it talks about it in Hebrews chapter 12. And it starts out with uh, talking about a race, and it says, keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? Jesus is the blueprint. Amen? Jesus is the incorruptible seed that's on the inside of us. We should look like, you want to you wanna know what our life should look like? Go back and read the Gospels. Go back and read the Gospels. And I like reading the Gospels because it pushes me. It's like, man, I need to, I need to step my game up. And I was looking at it this weekend when I read uh, Matthew chapter 9. Man, it was like an action movie. I was like, man, what's Jesus going to do next? It's like raising the dead, kicking people out of the room. Man, y'all got to get out of here. I'm about to raise somebody from the dead. Y'all ain't got no faith. Get out of the room. And everywhere he went, everybody he touched got healed. Demons out. See ya. 
Dead, raised. And 1 John 2 says, if we abide in him, then we'll walk just as he walked. Yeah. We've got to break out of selfishness. Yep. On agenda. Well, I had this, this. I see this person needs prayer, but if I do that, then this, this, and this ain't gonna get done. Well, if it's your job, job, you know, job's a priority, but you can still take a couple seconds and pray for somebody. But just to blatantly walk by somebody that God's telling you to pray for. You know, I believe we can carve out a little time to slow down and start being more intentional throughout our day. And, then, and notice I keep saying we because I'm I'm guilty of it too. <laughs> I'm not exempt. But here's the thing: God's shaking. The end of Hebrews 12 talks about shaking things that can be removed, and that's God's word, and things that will remain will remain. Why heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Words will remain forever. So moving those mindsets, moving that doubt, moving that unbelief, moving that tradition. What's some of the traditions we've been talking about? Healing ain't for today. <clears throat> oh, here's another one. Maybe God's trying to teach me something through this cancer. The devil's a lie. The devil's a lie. That is not in the Word of God. Nowhere. That is a doctrine of demons. Now, have we seen... I've seen people that I know that are minded people of faith that have died of cancer. That does not mean that that was God's will for their life. Sometimes we don't see healing and we don't 100% know why. We can't create a doctrine out of that. Put it on the shelf. Amen? If you're not sure why something happens, don't try to create a new chapter in the Bible. Right. Just say, all right, I don't understand this. I'm going to put this up here for a minute. And I'm going to keep moving. I have, I have stuff jump on me sometimes. And I'm like, why, Lord? Because your word says that no plague shall come near me. Why am I feeling these? And I don't understand. But you know what? I keep saying the word. By your stripes, I was healed. Take that communion cup. Boom. Thank you for your stripes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your blood. And we're not to sit there. The Bible says in John in uh, Matthew 16, Jesus teaches us how he's going to build his church. He tells Peter, Peter gets this revelation that he's the Christ. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which art in heaven. He says, you're a Peter. And on this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he goes straight in. He goes, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Y'all ready? Y'all listening? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Let's go back to the beginning. Peter was not the rock. Amen? Let's get that clear. Peter was not the rock that he was talking about building his church on. The rock was the revelation that Jesus was the Christ. Jesus is the foundation. Can I get an amen? Amen. In 1 Corinthians 3, Paul said there's no other foundation laid other than what? Christ. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's the chief cornerstone. That's what the Word says in another place. You know what corner, chief cornerstone means? That means everything needs to line up with Him. Everything in my life needs to be lining up with Him. And Jesus says, I'm going to build my church on the revelation of who I am. What's one of the most powerful ways we get revelation we've been studying Praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, amen. That's one of the number one ways we get revelation. Yeah. Paul, listen. Yeah. Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. You know what his confession was? And he said this to the Corinthian church who was operating in the gifts fluently. 
He says, I pray in tongues more than you all. That's a bold statement to say. Paul said, what I received, he, re he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And you know what he said? He said, what I received, I didn't receive from flesh and blood. Y'all listen to me? Yeah. You know how I received it? Revelation. You know what this is? What he wrote? You know what Paul wrote? The blueprint of the church. You know why he was under so much persecution? Because he had the blueprint of the church. Everything I'm telling you about who you are in Christ, he had all that. God entrusted him. Jesus entrusted him with all that revelation. And he was going around just like what we're doing right now. And he was releasing that revelation to the church. And persecution comes because of what? The word. The word. See, here's another sacred cow. We got to kick it over. We talked about it in the healing class that Paul's thorn was sickness. Paul's thorn was not sickness. Paul's thorn was not God. Amen. It was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. That word buffet means blow after blow after blow. Why? For the abundance of the revelations. Paul was wreaking havoc against the kingdom of darkness. Therefore, Satan sent a personal messenger to stop him. And if you go back to the chapter before that, you'll see what the messenger of Satan was doing. Stone, shipwreck, beaten with rods, 39 lashes several times. Like the dude was going through it. You know what? He didn't stop him. He cried out three times to God. And he said, God, help me. You know what God said? My grace is sufficient. You know what he was saying? He was saying, my grace. Grace is not just sitting there just getting the brake speed off of you. Grace is, man, I'm going through hell on earth and I'm still moving forward. Yeah. I'm still taking ground. Come on. Man, grace is powerful. Grace ain't, see, people got this twisted grace message of grace is just where I can just do whatever the heck I want to do. No. Grace is an empowerment to do everything that the Word of God tells me I can do. That's grace. Amen? Listen, when you start walking in your identity, the enemy is going to come in, he's going to attack, but guess what? The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, it says God's going to raise up a standard against him. You know what the standard is? The Word of God. When they would take territory, you know what they would do? They would put a standard in the ground. They would put a flag in the ground and they would take that territory and claim it. You can come against me, devil, but you can't have it. This house belongs to God. This territory belongs to God. This ministry belongs to God. Amen? My life belongs to God. My family belongs to God. The Bible said, doesn't say that weapons will not be formed against us. No, it promises. But it does say what? No weapon form against us shall what? Awesome. Amen. <coughs> Is that good stuff? Oh, yes, sir. We got to come up. God said come up higher. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. It's easy to fall back. Just get complacent with it. Uh, get comfortable. No, God's saying, come on, let's go to a, let's go to another level. Yeah. Church ain't Sunday and Wednesdays, it's every day. Amen. We got opportunities every day to speak to folks. Ain't that right, Daniel? Amen. Every single day. On the way to work. Loading the truck. At the store. At the gas station. On the work site. On the phone. I got people calling me all day long, man, ministering to people. 
I'm not going to say, oh, no, uh, come to my church on Sunday and we'll talk about that. Mm. No. <laughs> now is the time of salvation. Come on. Today. I'm not saying forsake the assembling of the saints because we're called to, to not forsake the assembling of the saints <coughs> coming together. But we come together to, to what? To what we're doing right now. We stir one another up into good, to, uh, love and good works. That's why we come together. And then when we go out, we don't just come and do church. We come and we become the church. Yeah. And we go out. Amen? We're the hands, the mouthpieces, and the feet of who? Jesus. Jesus, every day. God doesn't want a weekend affair. He wants it all day, every day. Amen. He says your lamp's on your feet. Amen. Thank you, brother. He doesn't call us his bride for us to just have something to do with him on the one day a week. Amen. I mean, we you got a wife, girlfriend, something. She don't want you just that one day a week. She wants your commitment all the time. Amen. Mm -hmm. Full commitment. Yeah. Amen. The simplest way of, of explaining it is like, you know, you, you eat like three meals a day to sustain your body. How do you expect to sustain your spirit by eating on Sunday and Wednesday? You know, even Bible study, you just don't eat breakfast all day? That's all you're going to have? You know why we do it? Why do we love God? Because He first loved us. It's all about love. Every one of the gifts are about love. Yeah. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll what? Keep my commandments. What are his what are the commandments, Daniel? Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Matthew 23, 36 through 39. Hang all of it on this. All of the law. It's all about that. It's all about that. If we ever get outside of that, then we need to check ourselves. Mm -hmm. Says you're like clanging cymbals. Yeah. And to me that just says you're annoying. Yeah. If you're not if you're doing all these things out of a, a sense of obligation, it's it's annoying. Maybe. Like what are you, why are you even doing? Oh look at first John two real quick. I know we were there the other day, but it kind of ties in with this. Um, <laughs> first John chapter two, starting with verse three. Excuse me. Y'all ready? Now by this, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Y'all see that? How do we know that we know him? How do we know that we know him? What did, what did the verses just say? What are his commandments? Love. Love God and love people. Love ourselves. It doesn't say go to heaven, but it does say know him. However, there is a place in the scripture where Jesus, there's a group of people that come to Jesus and they said, we did this in your name and we did that in your name. And Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't really fully understand that, but I don't want to be that person. <laughs> Honestly. I want to be known as a lover of God. Amen. You think they did that out of the fear of God, not out of love of God? And that's why he said that? I think maybe they did it out of maybe obligation or faith. <coughs> like, I want, to, I want to be this or super Christian. Or, you know, I want everybody to see me doing this for reputation. Yeah. You know, for show. And believe it or not, and I hate to think about that, but there are a lot of people that get up here for show. Mm. Yeah. And they take people's money, too. Mm. Oh, my mm -hmm. And you got to think, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of the times, you know, they were seeking to the Jewish culture, which was thousands of years of uh, ritualistic uh, 
sacrifices and A, B, and C equals yeah. I love the Lord. You right. know, and so he was combating their their old ways of thinking. We're bent, maybe. You know, and, and be baptized. And so, you know, so you could say religious mindset? Yeah, absolutely. The Pharisees, see, Jesus said, unless your righteousness exceeds yeah. that of the Pharisees, you'll not see the kingdom. Yeah. What was the righteousness of the Pharisees? The, the, Jesus told a story about um, two people in the temple. One of them was beating his chest, and he was saying, you know, basically he was righteous, and he wasn't saved, so how could he be righteous? And then you had this sinner saying, I need Jesus. I'm a sinner. And the one who acknowledged that he needed a Savior and he needed to be made right was the one that received that grace. Amen? See, the, the Pharisees thought they had it. They thought they could do it without Jesus. They thought that their laws and their customs made them right. And Jesus was saying, no, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And they were like, that's blasphemy. What are you talking about? <laughs> and what did they want to do? Well, what did they do? Right. They killed him. You know, but he was persecuted throughout his whole walk because of the word, because of the truth. You know, um, Okay. Well, that's horrible, ain't it? To be beat up, <coughs> stoned, spoke badly against, all for running around saying, hey, be nice to your brother, do, do good, do right. Next thing you know, you get stoned, hurt. The only thing you're saying is you be good to someone. That's got to be horrible. Amen. Well, well, let me say this. It's going to happen. Because Jesus said, no student is greater than his what? Teacher. It's going to happen. I just want to tell you all that. Just because you're in Christ doesn't mean that every day is going to be perfect and nothing's going to be wrong and there ain't going to be. It's going to, it's going to amp up, as a matter of fact. It's going to amp up because of the word. Yep. The sower sows the word and Satan comes immediately to steal the word. So don't. I'm, I'm saying that not to be like a prophet of doom. I'm saying that to encourage you because Jesus said in this world you will have tribulation. Yeah. You will have persecution. But what? But be of good cheer. Yes. Be of good cheer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Be of good cheer. Uh, James said count it all joy. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Count it all joy when they persecute you. Jesus said blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. We're blessed when we're persecuted. Yeah. I'm not crazy. I just know that Jesus has already won the victory and He's already sat down. He overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil, and He's made us more than conquerors over every situation. I'm not thankful for that situation, but I'm thankful in it. Yeah. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is my... And let the weak say that I'm strong. strong. Because in my weakness, I made what? His strength is perfected in my weakness. Alright, we're out of time. Listen. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. So as I walk in love every day, guess what? That love is being perfected in me. And as a result of that, in verse 6, from hanging out with him, he who abides in him, abides in who? Abides in love, abides in Jesus, shall walk just as he walked. Love is the key. Love is the key. Love is the key. Love is the key. <clears throat> that love is going to cast out every fear, everything that's been hindering me from stepping into the things of God, the things that God's been calling me into. If I'm not stepping into that, if I'm afraid, I need to go back and check my love wall. Amen. And no condemnation there. 
just get it in line because where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work. Strife, envy, got to go. What's envy? It's self-seeking. What's strife? It's something against my brother. Situation. Just, you know, like pour a little alcohol in that wound. Pour a little salt in that wound. No. Pray for your brother. Pray for your enemy. Pray for those that use you. Pray for those that persecute you. Amen? Love. Amen. If you abide in him, then you'll walk just as he walked. All that other stuff that casting down every thought and every imagination that comes against that word. Let's get ready to pray out. Amen. Jesus said that we could walk just as we walk. Amen? Yeah. And as he is, so are we in this world. Let's take our faith to another level. Start stepping out and see what God can do. Amen? We should have so much, as Todd White says, God confidence that nothing should, nothing should stop us. We have so much confidence in our God to take care of every situation that nothing should stop us. Amen? No fear, no doubt. Why? Because we're not the one that's doing it. God's doing it through us. He's using us as a vessel, but He's doing it through us. <clears throat> So I can have that confidence and know, man, if I step forward, he's going to give me the words to speak. And when I lay hands and when I prophesy, when I speak a word, I've got all of heaven back of me. Because whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loose in heaven. And when I open my mouth to speak, life and death is in the power of my tongue. Amen? Speak life. Think life. Big faith. Speak faith. Amen? Amen. Pray us out, Frank. Good night. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning to thank you for again for the day that you blessed us with. Thank you for blessing us with life and breath. And Father, just ask today as uh, we go out, Father, that you allow each and every one of us, Father God, to be Jesus to those that you put in our path, God, that we can show uh, everyone love and show everyone father god that there is a hope and that hope is the name of jesus and father we ask today father that you keep us safe as we go that you uh, uh father god just continue to use us mightily for your glory and it's in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Whew. I hold this moment, man. yeah bro